All right, things are getting weird already. So Hellbound, Hellraiser 2, tells the story of Kirsty, the survivor of the first film, being admitted into a psych ward where there the head doctor re-unleashes the Cenobites. What is up everybody? Continuing on strong with the Hellraiser review series. So if you guys have not seen already, my plan is to release all these in succession. So if my plan has come through, then the Hellraiser review of the original is only a day old. If you have not seen that, pause this video. Go check out that review, or I'll put a card up here, then come back to this one and follow along in order with the rest of us on this crazy-ass little movie series. So, as I said in the first review, I am fairly new to the Hellraiser franchise. I've seen the original a few times. I have seen this one a few times. I have seen part four two or three times, and then I've seen three and the very last one once. The rest of these are all going to be fresh watches, so going to be an interesting little journey, but I'm going to be doing every single movie in this franchise, hopefully one a day for, uh, what, 10, 11 days? How many of these fucking movies are there? So now we're at the first sequel, Hellbound, Hellraiser 2. Now this is a movie that I have seen a number of times. Uh, I've seen it on TV quite a few times. I remember watching it with my dad once or twice. I've watched it on my own accord once or twice. So I've seen this three, four times, something along those lines, and... It's always been a really weird movie to me. Uh, I never have watched it like as a double feature with the first one. I've never watched one and immediately went into the second one except for this viewing experience right here for this review series. So I was curious if watching them back to back would have a little bit more of a through line and would make the second movie stand out a little bit more to me. Did it! Let's talk about it. So starting off with the positives for Hellbound, Hellraiser 2, the first thing is that I do think this is an interesting follow-up to the first film. It doesn't have quite the same tone. It doesn't have quite the same direction. There's certainly much more of a, you know, fantastical, mythical element to this second film where the first one was very much body horror and, and sadomasochism, and that stuff's certainly here, but it goes in a little bit different of a direction. It doesn't feel like they said, okay, well, we did that first movie, let's just do that again, but, you know, maybe a little bit bloodier. Uh, and for the fact that they put this into production and greenlit this before the first film even came out, and this came out just a year later, it is pretty impressive for a horror franchise especially to take such a different route when they could have easily just did the first movie again. I like the fact that we, you know, revisit Julia, we revisit Frank. Julia kind of becomes the main villain for a little bit there where Frank was kind of that role of the first film. So we get to explore her a little bit more, get to explore that whole, you know, body recomposition element of that first film and go in a little different direction. <laughs> Nothing personal, babe. I like the whole aspect of Kirsty being in this mental ward. Nobody really believing her about this crazy ass story that she's telling. And the people that do believe her believe her for all of the most nefarious reasons. And then eventually going into this actual, you know, hell dimension that the Cenobites are home to and seeing kind of a visually fleshed out version of the world that we were only teased in the first film. So I appreciate all of the creativity. I appreciate all of the, you know, the, the new directions that they decided to take in this one while very much feeling like story-wise a, a direct follow-up to the first film. I also think that Kirsty is a much better character here. Now she was a good character in the first film, but if that was all we got, I, I would never put her on a top list of final girls. I think that she is very much kind of a, a passenger in that movie. She's not that kind of, you know, take charge final girl, like she's taking action against the villains. Here, she actually is. Trick us again, child. And your suffering will be legendary even in hell. And there's a lot of parallels, I think, to the way that they utilize her character in this sequel to how Nancy was used in Dream Warriors. And you guys know I love that movie. I adore it. So I kind of, I appreciated the parallels there where now she's in this mental ward. She's got this younger girl who's kind of getting tossed into this crazy situation. She kind of has to become the older sister figure, like kind of the more mentor figure to, to be more of a defender of this younger girl and also take on Julia, take on Frank, take on this doctor very head on, as well as face the Cenobites very directly again, which could very much just be an instant death, instant torture for the rest of her being 
but she doesn't. And so I enjoy her much more as a character in this second movie. And finally, I really enjoy the hospital as a horror setting. There have been a ton of great, iconic, effective horror films that have a hospital or a psych ward or something along those lines as its main setting. For me personally, I get a little bit creeped out with hospitals, even if it's the cleanest, most friendliest hospital in the world, and I'm not even a patient there. I'm just walking in to visit somebody. There's always something icky there. I don't know if it's the presence of death or just the, the, the reality behind all the clean, sterile walls, what's going on inside this place. I've never felt comfortable in a hospital, and that transfers into whenever I'm watching a movie in a hospital. So very easily, you can heighten all of my senses that you're supposed to get heightened in a horror film or a thriller by setting it in a hospital. So that just works for me. But for this, for having the whole hell and torture and pain, all these themes of the Hellraiser movie series thus far, I think the hospital setting actually heightens a lot of that. And it makes, it, it makes natural sense for a movie with all of those thematic elements to be set in a hospital. Now moving on to the mixed, and I really just have one major mixed gripe here to where I appreciate some of it, but some of it kind of bugged me, and that's the effects work. And I kind of had that same gripe in the first film, only here is much more things that I like, things that I didn't like. I think that a lot of the gore effects are great here. I think all of the effects with like, you know, the muscles and everything on Julia as she's being recomposed was just as good, if not better than it was with Frank in the first film. I like some of the designs of the Cenobites, although we do see them, this pretty much the same designs of the first film, but they're altered slightly. Uh, even the little birth of Pinhead scene I thought was pretty cool for a practical scene. The doctor, the way that he looks is kind of crazy where he's got that little, you know, suction cut to his head and he's just kind of floating around. And it, all of that stuff I thought was actually really good. Unfortunately, they use a lot of stop motion and a lot of kind of like, they remind me of Beetlejuice, a lot of Beetlejuice effects in this movie. Those don't age so well and they use a lot of them here. There was really only one major effect in the first film that felt that way to me. Well, two. Here, there's multiple effects to where it's like, that looks awesome, that looks like shit, and I can tell it's 30 years old. Now, moving on to the negatives. The thing that I have always disliked about this movie, that every single time I watch it is the main thought that I walk away with, and it was still, despite watching it back to back with the first film, the main thing that I walked away with this time this movie's just fucking weird. <laughs> this movie is just way too weird for me. Now there's some weird shit in the first film, but it's done to a very creepy, dark effect to where it's the horror that stands out. This is just strange. Like I said, I appreciate the creativity. I appreciate the change of tone and going in the more fantastical, mythical kind of edge to it. Like when they get into the actual hell realm and there's all these labyrinths and stuff like that. And, and even visually I like, like even when she's in Frank's own personal hell and you got those little beds coming in and out and you know, the some chick or something's underneath the bed. All that stuff is cool, but it's mixed throughout the movie with just weird shit. Weird characters, weird directions, weird tones, uh, weird visuals, even the, the box, which is just such a creepy little item, just that little l uh, lament configuration box, and they turn it into this little, you know, diamond-shaped thing, and there's all these geographical things going on. It, it's just a strange-as-fuck movie to where every single time that I watch it, I can understand how some people, and there are some people, that say that the second one is the superior film. I can understand some people with that particular taste appreciating this one more. I'll take the horror of the first film any day of the week. Second giant gripe that I have with this movie, I hate the fact that the doctor comes in and just wipes the floor with the Cenobites easily. I don't like the fact that we have these villains that are made to be like, you know, the, the big bads. The Cenobites are supposed to be the unstoppable force of this franchise thus far. And this fucking doctor, enters into this hell realm, becomes some form of a Cenobite himself, and then just kills them all in seconds. Just just throws knives at him and kills every single one of them, even Pinhead. Like, you get a second where you think Pinhead's gonna fuck him up, and you're like, this is gonna be kinda cool. And he just wipes the floor with Pinhead in seconds. And it's like, what, what, what the fuck? You don't do that. You don't do that with your signature villains. I know we're only two movies in thus far, and you didn't know this was gonna be a nine movie shit show, but you don't do that. 
But my biggest gripe with this movie that really stood out to me this time is the editing of certain scenes is so painfully drawn out that it's annoying. And it happens multiple times throughout this movie. I mean, the first time that I really noticed it was whenever they were doing the whole gauze wrapping of Julia. They wanted her to have a different look than Frank who was just sitting there, you know, muscular tissue all out for the air to get. And they wanted to wrap her and make her look a little bit more feminine, a little bit more covered up, which is cool, but we don't need a five minute sequence slowly wrapping her with gauze oh, every single square inch. Oh, now we gotta do her arm. Now we gotta do her other arm. Now we gotta do her face. We get it. You can wrap a couple of little limbs and we're like, okay, you're wrapping her whole body. We get it, just show it. Just fucking show it, just show it. But they keep doing this throughout the movie. There's multiple scenes where it's just like, we get it. We don't need any more from this scene. You have conveyed what you need to convey. Cut, cut, edit, do something. I mean, the scene where the doctor is becoming a Cenobite, like there's these noises and stuff and he literally is like looking up like, And it just cycles through the same images of him just looking all fucked up, up, and then it transfers to something and he's just looking all fucked up. And it's just like, show that once and then show him turn it into a centipede. We fucking get it. But all in all, guys, decent sequel. It, it's decent enough. I think if you're on board with the first film, it's certainly worth watching. If you didn't like the first film, maybe give this one a shot. If you like fantasy and stuff like that a little bit more, but you're probably not going to like this one much more. But it's never going to be one of those movies that I could just pick out of a movie collection and go chill out and watch it. It's never going to be my go-to for this franchise or just for a random horror movie. You know, I can pick a random Freddy movie. I can pick a random Halloween movie. I can throw on Final Chapter or Part 6 and something like that. Hellraiser 2, never going to be one of those movies. I might follow it up after the first one. You know, two out of ten times that I watched the first one, that's about it. So if you're a fan of the first film and you want to see where these characters go, where this world continues to flesh out, and all of the pain that they have in store for you, definitely check out Hellbound Hellraiser 2, but don't spend a whole lot of money on it. Don't bother adding it to your collection until you're sure that you enjoy it. And if you didn't like the first one, don't even bother with it. So, gonna have to tell you to stream it. So what do you guys think of Hellbound Hellraiser 2? Are you one of those people that think this is actually the better film of the two? Maybe your favorite of the franchise? Do you hate this movie? Do you always watch the first two in succession and think they actually make a nice little one-two double feature? Let me know all of your thoughts down below on Hellbound Hellraiser 2 and we will talk about it. Keep your eyes peeled for Hellraiser 3. What's it called? Hell on Earth? Something like that? Creative. Hellraiser 3 coming up very soon. Thank you guys for watching as always, but please like and share this video to help it get shared around and get the Hellraiser fever going while I go through the rest of the torture of this franchise and you get to enjoy my pain, you sick bastards. Please hit the subscribe button so you can enjoy all that pain as it drops. We're gonna be doing this, like I said, my plan is one a day for the rest of this franchise until I'm done. And as always, remember, opinions like assholes, but that doesn't mean you have to be. 